Hi everybody, I'm just going to go through today how to bake a high poly mesh into a low poly mesh. I'm using Blender, but this is, any application can do it, I'm, I'm just going to, I won't go through the Blender specific steps, I'll just say the basic concepts and you can interpret that into your modeling program. So what I've got here is my high poly mesh, <coughs> uh, you can see it's just, it hasn't been unwrapped if I select it all, there's no UV data. Uh, hasn't got a texture. All it is, it doesn't have to be one contiguous mesh. It's all, it's got floating geometry in it. Doesn't matter. Just a high detail mesh, however you want to model model it. I've gone to my other layer. I've got my low poly mesh, which is a single quad, uh, which is obviously made up of two triangles. Now, uh, in order to bake them, I have to unwrap my low poly mesh and give it image data so that it can bake. Uh, it can write the bake to the image data. So I'm going to unwrap it, which because it's a quad, it's just a very simple unwrap. If you had a more complex model, you would have to um, unwrap it properly and and, uh, and make sure that you don't have any overlapping faces. If you have, you can have overlapping faces um, if the if they are exactly the same, uh, if they if they're both getting the exact same data, but it's kind of hard to explain. For now, if you're just beginning, don't have any um, overlapping faces. If you've mirrored a mesh, delete half of it, bake, and then copy the new half over and, and mirror it and re-stitch it together. So I've got my image untitled. It's just a 1024 by 1024. And I have my UV data, which means it's been unwrapped. So I'm just going to bring my high poly mesh up. Uh, in Blender, we select the high poly mesh and then select the low poly mesh so that the low poly mesh is active and the high poly mesh is just selected. So I'm going to do that now. And then we go into our bake dialog. When you are baking, bake your normals first because the uh, algorithm used for baking is uh, baking your normals is much quicker to produce than the ambient occlusion. And so it's you can catch mistakes in your normal bake easier than you can catch them in your ambient occlusion. So I'm going to go, of bake mode is normals, normal space, tangent, you can use object, world, whatever you want, but most engines, use, most game engines use tangent, so I'm going to leave it at tangent. And this option, selected to active, is important. Different programs are obviously going to call it different things. Um, if I was to unclick that, then it'll just try to bake the data of, uh, it'll just try to bake as if the other mesh is another object in the scene, not, the, not as if the other mesh is a... Um, is to be baked from. So if I was to do this and go bake, I'm just going to get a straight um, neutral normal. Uh, whereas if I go selected to active, that means I'm telling my program to bake from the selected high poly mesh into the active low poly mesh. This is going to change between programs, but the concept stays the same. So if I bake that, you'll see pretty quickly my normal map pops up, and that looks all good. Now, if you're doing, if you have a very complex mesh um, and you are baking your normals, the reason why I say to bake your normals first is because if I flip the normals here and then I rebake, you'll notice that there's a, um, opposite colours to what they should be. There should never be a green, or there should never be this colour green in a, a tangent space normal map, or this colour yellow, for instance. And you can see that the normal map tries to interpolate between the different colors rather than just having a straight line as well. Um, so it's going to create some weird effects in engine. You don't want to have that. So if you ever have anything like that, you've got your normals facing the wrong way. <coughs> so I'm just going to flip them back around the right way. Rebake. And you'll see it's all right now. Same thing with your low poly mesh. If your low poly mesh is facing the wrong way, if your entire uh, your entire bake comes out backwards, it's because your low poly mesh has its normals around the wrong way. You'll see it's all green. You don't want any of that going on in your normal map. And this this is also why we bake the normal map first. Because if I was to bake the ambient occlusion map, it'll all come up black because the normals are facing the wrong way. So I'm going to go back in, flip these normals, rebake my normal map. And there you go, that's good to go. Now you'd usually save that to uh, whatever directory you're using and you'd use that as your normal map and maybe modify it a little bit. 
Uh, now I've got, I know that my normal map is alright, I know that my model is ready to bake the ambient occlusion, I'm just going to change it to ambient occlusion. Um, when you are baking ambient occlusion in your program you'll have uh, what is either called samples or passes or detail or something like that. Uh, in Blender it's called uh, samples. I think it's default at 4. If it's, uh, if you have a low sample rate you'll get a grainy AO. So if you, if I put this at 2 for instance, and then I go back and bake my ambient occlusion. You'll see the very, very grainy AO, which is not what you want. So I'm not sure what it defaults to in Blender, but always go in and change that to about 16. Some people go 24, some people 36. Whatever floats your boat, really. Just uh, change that. Give it a high sample rate, and it'll bake the ambient occlusion. This sample rate or passes, it means it's going to bounce more light, and it's going to get a more accurate bake but it is going to take a long a lot more time so I'm gonna uh, hit this this is going to take a while so I'm just going to stop videoing and I'll come back to it once it's baked okay so you can see our ambient occlusion maps done now uh, bring it up you can see because uh, I put the samples up higher it has baked it much cleaner uh, blender doesn't and anti alias it's bakes which is kind of crap um, but that's all you really need to know. I'll use this ambient occlusion map, I'll put it in GIMP and I'll use the color to alpha um, dialog and I'll make the white go to alpha so that only the black remains in the image and I'll use that overlay on an image to give it the shadows straight away without having to paint all that crap in. Make it uh, much much easier to use. So that's all. Uh, all you have to do in to bake your model is take your high poly model, just model it, you don't need to unwrap it, you don't need to give it a any more information just the model but in your low poly model you have to unwrap it and you have to give it an image and then bake when you bake always bake your normals first just because it's quicker and you can f sort out your issues before you go into the lengthy ambient occlusion bake um, also check your samples make sure your samples are or samples passes whatever they're called in your program so that you don't have a really grainy image uh, that's really all there is to it. Um, more complex models don't really need any more information. There's, it's just more work to unwrap them properly. If you do um, have a complex model, model make sure you uh, don't have any overlapping faces. Delete your faces that are overlapping or that are mirrored and then bake and then put your faces back in. Um, and just dry stuff, just fiddle around and, and figure it out as you go. Um, thanks for watching, see you next time.